gang and welcome to episode 27. <laughs> Why do I keep acting surprised every time I say the next episode? Because, well, it's just surprising to me that I've gone ahead and here it is. It's now the 2nd of July and <laughs> I'm on the 27th episode. I'm Ray. Welcome to the Beauville in Newtown and our continued Pardon me. Uh, our continued escapade on um, Union Station. Now, um, I'm going to try to bring this down. Okay. Now, obviously, we talked about the road and the sidewalks, and tonight I am actually going to start on the. Uh, area that is not gray that is outside of this blue area why is the blue area there well that is where union station sits don't necessarily need paint within this area and i've actually come up with another idea you know when i talked about in the last episode that um the union station was going to need a floor and i didn't have um styrene to do that. I've got another idea and I'll share that a little bit later. But first what we're going to do is we're going to open up the paint and this is the one that I want first. And if you also notice sitting over here I've got um, some fine turf, uh, some light green uh, tone, and then we've got a green grass tone. Now this was stuff that was in a box that was given to me. I've also got some lichen, reindeer moss, sitting over here as well, that I'm going to use for bushes. I'm hoping that it recovered after, um, you know, uh, when I moved, because I noticed that some of it had dried out. So if it did, if it didn't recover, well then I'll have to go get some new. And it's interesting. We've got, uh, I've got to go ahead and stir this up a little bit. This is latex paint. We've discussed this before. Um, and what this is is uh, Fryer Brown. Um, this is Glidden. It's semi-cheap paint. It's not real expensive paint because what we're doing here isn't <laughs> what we're using it for. Well, you know, it is what it is. I'm going to go ahead and dump that into my little bowl over here that I've got sitting off to the side for brushes. And then I'm going to see if I can find a halfway decent large brush to do what I want to do. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I don't think this one's going to be clean enough to do what I want to do, but we'll see. It doesn't need to be perfect, because by the time I'm done, hopefully nobody will see it anyway. So this is a darker brown than what I had... <laughs> It, it, it's amazing to me. Every time I've gone to the get paint, 
I've come up with a different color brown than what I had the last time that I went ahead and did something. I don't understand it. Um, and this is really dark. I mean really dark. But that's okay. That could be a plus. Now what I'm all I'm trying to do here is get right up to the edge of the sidewalk that I just put in in the last episode because I want to cover what is left of the white. And what I am going to attempt to do here with this is try to actually get some well not so much with the brown but when we get to the green is to kind of blend the green in um, with the foliage This almost reminds me of a crap brown. Almost. But that's okay. Like I said, it, it doesn't... You don't want this to be too light. Because that was one of the issues that I had. If you remember me talking about when I did... When my dad and I put this railroad together years ago, he actually came up with a wonderful color of brown. And I took that to the store because, well, the paint had dried, and I was kind of hoping that they could match it. Well, the problem was, is instead of them actually grabbing the paint color, they actually grabbed the rust color of the top of the can. Well, obviously, that didn't work too well. Nothing like trying to be right, nothing like right handed painting left handed, right? And I'm a dominant right, but I'm somewhat sort of ambidextrous, if you want to call it that. So, all we're trying to do here is get this white area covered in this chocolate brown paint, as I'm now going to call it. Even though it's, the actual color is fryer brown. And one of the things that I'm noticing is, boy, this stuff is drying in a hurry. And that could be a good thing. I mean, I guess if it is a little too dark, I can always add a little bit of white to it and see if I can whiten it or lighten it up a little bit. But for the moment, since this is on the, what I should have done is painted the other side, although you're going to see both, it doesn't really matter. But the whole point of this exercise is to try and get rid of the white, which I think I've done a pretty good job of there. Okay, so I'm going to continue painting the brown, and then we'll come back and we'll work on the green. So stick around. We'll be back. Okay, well... <laughs> Um, well, that, that brown is definitely a lot darker than what I wanted. That's, that's almost a chocolate brown. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's definitely a lot darker than what I had thought it was going to be. But it is what it is. Um, so, um, 
sorry, I'm trying to, this is the one I want. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do, after I get this can open, I should have opened this first, um, is we're going to, I guess, for the lack of a better term, oh man, I like that. Um, for lack of a better term, we're going to dry brush um, some green onto this. Now, what's the purpose in that? The purpose is, is if you paint it, if you if you go ahead and paint some of this green, and then you go ahead and you lay your your scenic material on top of it, you don't have to use as much of the scenic material because you've already got a a green base there. Well, what was the point of painting the brown? Well, the brown, if you go ahead and when we do this, it'll show that there's maybe bare spots. Um, so we're going to go ahead and pick up a little bit of paint here and just kind of... Not randomly, but and this brush is a little too stiff. I'm trying to get a little bit of randomness going here. You know, again, you're trying to, I guess for lack of a better term, trying to emulate the fact that there is, um, you know, it, it's, it's grass, there's dirt, you know, it, it's just not... Um, You know, you didn't just paint it right on the white or the whatever it is that you're painting on. Um, you're actually giving some, or trying to emulate texture and, and depth. Um, which, uh, of course, because we're in a 3D hobby, is what you're trying to do. You want to, don't, you don't want it to look like a painter's drop cloth, by any stretch of the imagination, but you also don't want it to be so uniform that it looks like it did. No, it shouldn't be that way. Um, and, of course, this is going on a lot thicker than what I really wanted, but that's okay. And, of course, around the sidewalks, that's going to be maybe a little less lush, I guess is a good way to put it, than what it is when you get closer or further away from the sidewalks. Kind of like that. And that is really blending. <laughs> that is really blending in. But that's a good thing. Because, like I said, you don't want it to be shocking when you look at it. I guess for lack of a better term. And now we're going to work on the opposite side here. But that's basically it. And then, and then the next thing is, is once, and of course this paint is drying really, really fast. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Of course it is if you're trying to do this um, to where you're going to use the paint as a um, uh, a glue to hold um, the, uh, the next part of this, which is the actual turf that's going to go on top of it. Um, you know that would that, that that that's making it a little, you know, a little little. It makes it a little harder to do what we want to do next. But all right, I think we're just about done. And yes, I still have the blue painters tape on here. And like I said, that was that was because of the fact that I was trying to keep. Obviously, we don't want the dirt and the ground cover on the white. Um, I'm still not sure exactly what I'm doing uh, about that whole issue. Um, if you remember correctly, I had mentioned the fact that I went up, I'm going to probably end up having to put a four in the Union Station. Um, but, you know what, for the most part, folks, I think... This is going to work out just fine. 
So I'm going to go ahead and put that away. And we're going to put that away. And again, this is latex. This is um, this is this color is uh, Glidden's Forest Green uh, or Mountain Forest. I'm sorry. Um, they came from uh, came from Home Depot. So I will link everything that I'm using or all the colors that I'm using on this uh, in the description. So stick around. We'll be back. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but I just got finished putting some, uh, <clears throat> let's see, this is fine turf in this little area here. Um, what I did, and I'm going to, actually I'm going to show you how I did this. It may not be what everybody would want to do, um, however, uh, considering what this is, and this is all foam core you have to remember, um, I'm afraid if it gets too wet, it's going to start to really warp, which it already kind of has in spots. And I've been able to massage it back flat um, for the most part. And um, well, let me show you what I did. I've been using, what I did is I just took full strength white glue, just as we did when I was working on the sidewalks. And instead of trying to dip it out of the, take it out of the bottle, I've been, I poured it into a, one of my, uh, uh, pallets and unfortunately I've got a lot of glue in that in that pallet but I'm hoping that I'm going to use better part of it because I don't know if I can get it back out of the the pallet <laughs> so we'll see so what I'm doing is I'm just brushing this brushing this on somewhat thin um, I'm sure that I probably could have thinned it out and done it as a 50-50 mix or whatever. Um, and I think actually in this area, I'm going to um, actually stay around these these sidewalks. I think I'm going to go ahead and stay with the, the fine foliage or the fine turf. But then I'm going to come back with the thicker, the thicker turf in a bit so we're gonna go ahead and that looks pretty good that's a fairly decent area now the first time I did this I actually did it with a spoon um, and then I realized of course these are shaker bottles so they've got shaker the shaker part to them which is great the only thing is is doing it this way I don't think you've got as much control over where the turf is actually ending up versus putting it down with a spoon, but that's okay. It's it's not a huge, huge deal. Alright, so that's basically that. And then what I'm going to do, actually it's a little light. It's a little light over here. Let's see if we can... course I've got clumps that came out of this too but then what I've done is I just take it over now you don't have to take it to the trash can you could probably try and get it back into the bottle but and that came out really light let's try that again huh I'm gonna let it sit a little longer this time let's see if we can get it to get in there a little bit thicker but while I'm waiting for that, what I'm going to do is we're going to come over this way because there's another part of the sidewalk that's going to be probably still a little bit lighter on the turf and around the building itself. that 
what I'm actually going to do is um, when I get the rest of this, I'm going to go with a little bit thicker or the heavier turf. Yeah, it seems like I've got a lot more control over this when I'm using the spoon, but that's okay. And I just noticed I missed a little bit. Just dabble that in there. There we go. I'll let that sit for a little bit, and then I'll come. I'll come back with the uh, the glue, and we'll do some more. I tell you, <laughs> I don't. I'm hoping this all shows up, but um, yeah, this for my first attempt at ever of doing ground cover. I will take it. Um, there were a couple of things that I wasn't real happy with that I kind of went back and, and fixed. Um, but I, I tell you what, and I know the lightning might be a little bit bright, and that is because I do have the ring light on, because I noticed where I've got the camera sitting, I'm right behind one of the pot lights. And uh, it was casting a shadow. So I figured this way, with the light now around the camera, it would be better than it would was with the just the pot light behind us. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this thing over to the layout and we'll see what it looks like there. Now, granted, I still have to work on the circle out here, um, which I've got to do some other work to as well. But um, So I've got to, I've got to paint, the, this, this here is going to get painted gray. This here will be that roundabout um, that goes in front of the building. But I tell you what... Um, I just kind of put a couple of trees there just for just for the heck of putting trees out there because I'm really not that at that point. But um, I, I I I tell you what, <laughs> wow! I, I never thought that I would be able to, you know, do the the scenic grass or that whatever you want to call it the turf the way I did. And that was that was the first attempt with it and to be perfectly honest I, I like the effect. I mean I've got like I said I've got a couple of little little idiosyncrasies that I may have to go back and touch up but for the most part I mean that <laughs> That that's that's something else. Now again, the building still isn't a hundred percent together. It's just it's just staged. Um, one of the things I did just notice today, as I was messing around, I was actually working on uh, trying to put a floor in it because I figured something out the other day, and that'll be on another video. <clears throat> but when I was messing around, I figured out that I cannot leave the the roofs off. Um, if I put the side pieces, if I mount, if I actually glue the side pieces to the building, I'm not going to be able to remove the um, the roof off of that, those two sides, or be able to put them back on, for that matter. Um, so any type of work that I'm going to do on those two side pieces, I'm going to do it before I glue anything together. So I guess that's going to be the next part of this whole thing. And then after I get finished playing with that, then we're going to swing over to this area and work on these guys a little bit and the area that they're sitting on. And so ba what I'm really looking at here is getting from the end of the layout, which is over here, over to... where the KFC is presently sitting, getting all this scenic, hopefully by the, uh, 
by the end of August. Um, that's 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 a. I, I want to say that that's that's really doable, but considering the fact the way things have been going, I don't know if it's really going to work out that way. Now, one other thing here, um, I realized the other day I goofed. Originally, I had the uh, KFC sitting like that. Well, when I put the sidewalk in, I made it too long. So what I'm going to end up doing is just kind of, you know, sitting it back this way and then just extending this out and making another parking lot on the side plus have it for deliveries and things of that nature. So that's it's another one of those little idiosyncrasies, one of those oopses that I'll have to go back and fix. But we'll be back. All right, Track Gang. So <laughs> progress was made. Um, got nothing else for this week. You all know the deal. Wait for the highball. Green tracks ahead. We'll catch you all next time. Be safe. God bless. We will see ya.